Okay, this is a 1962 Hamilton Electric Gemini. The movement is a 505, and uh, the movement is an infamous movement. It is an electric movement. It was uh, the precursor to the quartz movements. Uh, this is not a quartz watch. It's actually a, uh, a mechanical watch that instead of a mainspring uh, uses a, an electromagnet uh, that sits on the, um, on the balance itself and uh, by uh, alternating with the real magnets that sit on the, uh, on the watch plate by uh, turning on and off, uh, it actually creates the motion. It's a pretty insane um, movement and was ultimately unsuccessful, only lasting um, about a decade before the quartz watches really took over. Uh, it works. The big problem is that there's a part that wears out very rapidly because it's basically like flipping a switch on and off, on and off, on and off, um, many times a minute. You'll see that it's a pretty simple movement um, as movements go. There's a lot less pieces in it. Once this balance uh, plate, well, the main plate comes off the top plate, you're going to see that there's not many uh, gears in there, which is kind of cool. This is removing the shunt, they call it. Um, the purpose of this kind of shunt bridge here was to get the magnetic waves sort of uh, all across that area so that there wouldn't be any sort of dead spots. Uh, in the waves. The watch works just fine without it, so I don't know how necessary a piece that is actually, but uh, there it is. One thing you're gonna see throughout uh, as I disassemble this watch is that a lot of the parts are magnetized. I don't know if they have any actual effect on the uh, way the watch runs, but um, they are, a lot of them are like, you know, magnetized, and so sometimes they spring away uh, in funny ways from the tweezers or the screwdriver. Now I'm taking off the, uh, the balance uh, complete here, which is the, uh, also the power of the movement. Um, it's a crazy piece there. Heading into the keyless works. They are uh, also simplified because um, there's no winding of this watch. So there's no gear in there for winding, no intermediates, nothing like that. I disassembled, I did actually all the work on this watch when um, I was many cups of coffee uh, into the day, so uh, you'll probably see my hands shaking a bit. So that's a habit I really uh, probably need to break. Um, not drink so much coffee or caffeine and uh, maybe have some apple juice or something to sort of settle down my <laughs> trembling hands. Here you can see the uh, the train is rather standard. However, you'll see that the uh, the escapement wheel is completely different than what we generally look at. And here that is. And there's an example of the uh, wheel springing away to one of the magnets that are uh, pressed into the main plate. So I'm kind of just showing that a little bit to demonstrate that it's very magnetized. This little duck-looking uh, piece is, uh, serves two purposes. Uh, the watch is a hacking device, so when you pull the uh, when you pull the stem, when you pull the crown, the watch does stop, uh, which is very important because it's a battery-run watch. So when you stop it, it actually uh, saves the battery. But also, um, the way that little duck bill on the end there is uh, created, it when you push when you push the stem back in. It actually shoves the balance uh, in such a way that it gets the balance running. It's almost like the balance needs a little kickstart to get going. So consequently, uh, these watches um, 
when you push the stem in, the watch will look like it's running, which it may not be. So you have to actually sit there for a little bit to see if it continues to run. The amplitude of these watches is incredibly low uh, because of the mechanism, uh, making them problematic in certain ways in that the slightest amount of dirt will change them. And, uh, and here, this is something I wanted to say. This, this movement was doused in oil. Um, I have, I've rarely seen a movement so covered in oil, so it's hard to see it in these videos, but every piece is shiny with oil. So somebody really went to town, which is the absolute incorrect thing to do with all watches, but especially these electric watches because their amplitude is so low. You have to really be careful about how you oil the watch. I've seen a few broken arms on the setting bridge, so I'm being kind of as careful as I can here, pulling it up, because that right there, the, where I'm trying to get the tweezers in, that's a fragile piece. So again, this is also, magnet is fighting me. The, it didn't come up very easily because because magnet, and there you can see, it's, it's magnetized. Always put a, bit of pegwood down when you remove springs and clips, I've discovered. That's a good way to keep them from flying into another dimension. Again, continuing with magnetized pieces. I don't know that, as I said, that it matters on this watch because the entire premise of this watch is uh, magnetism, so I don't think it doesn't affect the balance in any way, in any negative way. That said, I did demagnetize all the parts uh, that obviously um, didn't need to be magnetized. Uh, I did not touch, the, you don't want, you absolutely do not want to put the main plate on a, on a demagnetizer because there's magnets uh, built into the plate as well as the, the balance wheel to a lesser dis degree. Here you can see the copious amounts of oil and grease. Very, very carefully uh, removing the jewel here. Those little clips can break quite easily, so care, just being very careful is a good idea. Once again, you can see just the excessive amount of oil that was put on this watch by somebody. Here is the uh, battery clip that was uh, in there pretty good. It took a little bit to get it out very important thing with these battery clips is to not lose the insulators. You'll see that those screws are actually insulated from that clip itself and then the clip is insulated from the main plate. Uh, you, you can't lose those insulating bits. If you do, the watch will not work. It'll essentially short circuit itself out. There's one of the insulators. Very important not to lose that. Um, again, you can see just the amount of oil that was everywhere. It's a shocking amount. This is another unique uh, two Hamilton watches uh, bit, which is a, uh, a, a 
jewel cap that is actually also a, a contact, an electrical contact. You'll see all that is actually, it looks rough, it was actually metal filings that had uh, oops, gotten stuck on the magnets there. You can see that magnetism is a continual uh, bit with this watch because the principle of it is a, is a open and closing magnetic circuit. For safety's sake, I'm not running the um, plastic bits through any kind of chemical washes. I don't know what damage I could do with them, so I'm just tapping, cleaning them with Rotico. Uh, soap and water would work also, but the Rotico is fine. These aren't moving parts. The idea is really to get them as sort of clean as possible of uh, debris and, and uh, oil. putting all the little insulators into Rotico and uh, letting the Rotico do its work. scene out of uh, the movie The Blob as the Rodico eats the, the cat jewel there. Then uh, cleaning these with one dip in a standard way, uh, rubbing away the dirt and then uh, more soaking of, in one dip. That is 90-10 oil. decided to clean, I try to clean as much of the stuff with the Rotico before putting it into kind of a wash, just because of the amount of um, metal filings on this piece, so I just didn't want to do that. So now we're uh, reassembling the watch, I'm reassembling it, everything's been cleaned uh, in standard cleaning fashion, starting with the little uh, hacking duck piece, I have to see what the proper name is for that. This is kind of considered a, uh, a clutch, I guess, of sorts that uh, will get it in and out. I'm looking at the parts list here, trying to sort of identify every part with the actual Hamilton name. Uh, I call that, uh, in my own world, I call that duckbill looking lever, <laughs> which I don't think is the, the proper uh, uh, term. Moving ahead, assembling the watch is pretty basic with the uh, the fourth wheel and the center wheel and as you can see the the train is a very simple train and since there's no uh, barrel there's nothing that has to get to the barrel to uh, to gear down or gear up the barrel movement Lubrication is with typical 9010 on those parts. Putting back the insulator. And oops, yes, no. First I have to put another thing in there first, that ca that dual, as I call it.
can be very, very sure that your insulators are all in there. If you miss an insulator, the watch will not work. Small amount of 1300. And then the Canon pinion, standard press. The key with these watches, as, as with all watches, is just don't over, over lubricate. The keyless works is your standard uh, kind of keyless works, minus um, a clutch to engage a winding mechanism of any sort because again this watch does not need that this is kind of a, a cool unique feature there where the gear that engages the uh, setting gears uh, is actually on there Again, pith wood, so that that spring won't go flying away. Those are hard lessons learned. And again, this uh, piece right here, um, try to be as careful as possible because I've seen uh, at least three of them with the broken uh, arm in there and uh, and that well that sucks Everything's working fine. Everything's moving nicely. Put down the top plate there. And uh, that'll be pretty much it for that side. Moving back to the uh, other side. We're closing up the keyless works. And then locking down the stem. And yes, I did lubricate that properly. Um, it's not seen on video here. So we're getting closer. Everything looks like uh, it's working. So now to the uh, to the balance complete. This is the uh, contact pin, which is the uh, the invention, the real invention and nemesis of the Hamilton Electric 505. Uh, so. Um, initially I'm cleaning up the balance and uh, again 90-10 simple lubrication there not too much hopefully and the hope being that when I get this all assembled because this thing had been doused just covered in oil that, uh, that when I put a battery in it and get it started that it'll run and that would be a really great service, uh, nice bit. So we have the balance moving very nicely, which is great. It's not regulated properly, but uh, doing a little bit of last minute 9010 in there. And uh, everything's going well. So we're approaching a moment of truth here. Put the shunt in. Those screws uh, screw into a magnetic plate below, not into the uh, main plate itself. So sometimes you have to keep turning them until they catch the plate. So here we go. Battery in. Exciting moment. Okay, we have it pushed in. It's going. That's the catapult action. Is it working? Uh-oh. No, it's slowing down and 
darn it. Okay, nothing is getting it going. So as feared, we have the classic Hamilton Electric problem. So, here we go. That contact pin, ah, and I'm gonna zoom in on there. That contact pin is worn out. Right there is the classic issue with Hamilton 505s. That is the on-off area and it burns out over time because it's literally sparking every time it makes a contact. Unfortunately, these parts aren't made anymore. So with every tick of the watch, the Hamilton 505 is nearing death uh, that can't be easily replaced. At some point, these will no longer work unless someone makes an aftermarket part. So we are working with a finite supply of uh, stock from from the time from the 1960s. So what I'm doing now is removing the contact pin, the old contact pin, which uh, is a very touchy uh, job. The removal, uh, of course, is uh, not as bad because, well, these, this is a disposable part right now. Originally, when these watches were made, the entire balance would be replaced. Uh, so it was a lot easier for watchmakers. They just had to change out the balance. But that's, of course, no longer. So now we go in for this specific part. And there are special tools, and um, dedicated makers, I believe, have the tools. Uh, I don't, so I'm using the tools that I have as carefully as I can. You'll notice that that balance staff is a very unique balance staff with a, an upper collar and a lower collar. Finger block, which prevents the watch from overbanking. A lot going on there. People use a roller removal tool this way, I have seen. However, I do not want to risk breaking that pivot, so I decided not to do it that way. So this is the way I'm doing it. Um, we have to be very, very careful in attempting not to destroy that pivot, uh, that contact. But remember, this contact is no good anymore. So if it does get totaled, it sounds so bad. But you don't want to warp the the, uh, the balance wheel itself. So. so that's the old one. This is a new one. These things are like hen's teeth. So you want to be very careful when you reinstall these. It's a very thin wire that goes to a gold contact on the jewel there. It has to go in properly. It kind of pushes itself in the right way and it has to go to the proper depth. Okay, I actually, uh, full disclosure, I already just did this without the camera running, but to repeat what I did, I, um, I used my jeweler, uh, my press, and used a collar that was wide enough to go around both the uh, pivot and the impulse jewel, the roller jewel there, like so, and then carefully pressed. Now, one thing I noticed was that it didn't press exactly uh, parallel, but I was able to fix that um, with the tweezers, so hopefully, that works. So that is how I repressed the uh, pivot back onto the um, balance. Okay, so then this wire, and I think uh, future you, uh, work, I really, you really should be using a plastic tweezers, not metal, because the shellac on that wire is an insulator, and you have to be very, very, very careful not to rub the shellac off of there. This is a very delicate wire. It's thinner than a human hair. And you have to be very careful because uh, it's, a, it's a very fragile wire. And it also has that shellac on there that you do not want to rub. Here you'll see, I am rubbing the shellac and you'll see how easily it comes off with a screwdriver. This is so that I can uh, have a good contact with the screw when I put it back in. But that's how easy that comes off.
Again, you'll see how fragile this wire is because now I'm trimming it short by just bending it back and forth a couple times and you'll see how easily it can break. So this is a very touchy, touchy bit with a part that is no longer made and quite honestly would be tricky to machine. I don't think it's impossible and I think eventually some people will have to, but, but for now, uh, it's not a part that exists except as old stock, new old stock. So then putting the balance back together, um, obviously trying to get the, uh, the spring in the proper position. Um, I did put it 180 out of sync, but that <laughs> you'll easily and quickly see that you did it wrong if you do that. And then putting this all back together, pretty typical work as compared to regular, you know, mechanical watches. After I put it all together, I did clean it so that there would be no chance of any kind of fingerprints. You'll see I had a bare hand finger there. So once back, we have it going and uh, it's working. The hacking, the hacking slash thrusting bit works there. And so then it's time to see what happens if I put a battery back in. And there we have it, going at a nice, nice, healthy rate. Once again, it is alive. And that was without the shunt. As you can see, it works without that. We put that in. And we have a running movement. I don't show the regulation uh, of it here or adjusting beat at her. Did some gentle cleaning of the dial, just a little bit of dirt removal and, uh, and didn't go very crazy. Obviously dial work uh, can go badly very quickly. So you want to be very careful. I'm using uh, a little bit of soap and distilled water and Rodico and just doing some gentle work. Dial's not in horrible condition. It's it's pretty good. And then putting it back. Uh, at this moment, I was I forgot that this is actually a dial that the uh, crown sits at about the four o'clock position, four thirty position. Up oh, now, I remembered. There you go, that's right. And then your typical stuff. Doing a little cleaning of the hands. Uh, they had some grime and stuff on them and uh, they shined up nicely. Again, just with uh, soap and water or even saliva, nothing stronger than that. And very gentle, very gentle. And then setting the hands uh, in your typical style of, uh, you know, you can put your hour hand in and then you want to make sure that you put that to 12 and get your minute hand right above it. And uh, there we go. Time to see it tick. Still running. That's a good thing. And there you see the classic ticking of a Hamilton Electric. It's a katink, 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 katinka. <laughs> they're, uh, they're a ridiculous watch, quite honestly, but I love them to death. They represent a time when people were trying something differently, uh, something different, and... Um, it was that mix of mechanical and electric. And with a final band on, I think that this is a beautiful looking watch. One that I am proud to add to my Hamilton Electric collection. I also have a white gold Gemini. So now it's the uh, complete collection of Geminis, the Gemini twins. And there it is. Hopefully you enjoyed this. <laughs>